And before you start, I got a quick question about that first one that we did, uh, the LTV. What was that answer? Was it 38? I couldn't remember what the answer was. 38,000 something. something. Y'all remember that? Just a second. I think it was 48.95. What you're looking at? Like the total bring to close? Yes. I thought it was 48.925. The 25% of 190 plus the loan or plus. Plus a loan fee. Okay. A 14.25. There's that. Yeah. There's the 80 This is the 80% loan to value version. I thought I did. That. So yeah, there's too. the 80%, 20% down. So it's 20% of the 190 is 38 grand. And then your one point on your loan amounts, 1520. Add those together, you get this 39 number here. Okay, I thought we did one for 75%. Uh, we did the one before that, but I don't think I recorded it. Okay, no, that's fine. I did record it. It'll, you'll be able to see it when you go back. I didn't save the sheet because I changed it to 80 in the middle of that. Oh, no, that's fine. The numbers I gave you were 75. Okay, thank you. Do you want to do one at 75? No, 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 you're okay. All right. I, um, we, we, yeah, when I review it, I'll just go back to that one. All right, cool. So the, on this next one here, we're going to do types. And remember, we have these things called interest-only loans or a straight loan where you pay the interest first, then the principal. And a version of an interest-only loan or a version of a straight loan. And the reason they call this straight See the vertical curve here is straight up and down. So you pay all interest. Once you pay all the interest off, then you pay the principal. And when you're done paying it off, your balance is zero. There is a very special version of this called interest only. And a lot of times you see it IO where you only pay the interest. At the end of the loan, here's the big difference. At the end of the loan of interest only, Balloon. you still owe the original amount you borrowed. So all you really did was pay rent on the money. And to pay that loan off when it comes due, it is called a balloon payment, right? Mm -hmm. You would either refi it or sell the property. You would refi it or sell the property. So that is a straight loan and a version of that is interest only. It is a form of a straight loan. Think about covering, I mean, if you did this and erased all those payments to a principal, look what you get. You get interest only when you still owe all the principal. So it is a version of a straight loan. A uh, conventional loan, we talked about a conventional loan is 80% loan to value, but there is no PMI. All right, you have an 80%, there's the value, there's the loan amount, there's your 20% equity. There's no mortgage insurance because you've got equity. When you go above this 80 is when PMI kicks in. And depending on how far above you go, depends on how much the PMI is. Here's the 80. You're only going to pay a little bit to 85. You may pay more to 95. And then you may pay even more if you get 100% loan to value. <clears throat> sure couple government loans in there. Remember, we've got FHA. FHA is a insured loan. FHA insured. 
And the good thing, what's the biggest reason people want FHA? What's low the biggest payment. advantage to an FHA loan? Low down, down payment. payment. Low down payment. How much is the payment? 3.5% loan. That means, I'm sorry, I just misspoke. So 3.5% down. So it's a 96.5% loan. All right. 96.5% loan. So is that over 80%? 96.5 oh, yeah. over 80? Yeah. yeah. So banks can still charge PMI on FHA insured loans. They can still charge loan origination fee. They can still charge discount points. What the, What is the one thing the FHA cannot charge a client? What fee? Prepayment. There is a fee that some banks charge. No government loan can get charged what? Access. Nobody? Really? A payoff? I don't know. No government fee should have a prepayment penalty. It is called a P3. Mm -hmm. You're looking like that. Mm -hmm. FHA can't, VA can't, SBA can't, USDA can't. This is the one case when the government is really glad that you pay them back because their money is designed to help other people. So they are not going to make it hard for you to pay back the money by saying, oh, well, I can't pay it back because I don't have a fee. There is no penalty for prepayment on any of the government loans. Okay, so that's the FHA. Now there's another one called the VA. This is the, the VA guaranteed loan. VA guaranteed. No down payment. All right. Once again, they don't make the loan. FHA doesn't make the loan. The bank still loans it, so the bank can still do all of this stuff. The good thing about a VA is what? It actually is 100% loan to value. So once again, is that over 80? Yes, it is. People that do VAs can still charge BMI and things like that. Cannot charge P3, no prepayment penalty. So what is the word or what is the term that guarantees or ensures that the VA goes out and checks to make sure the value is cool? A phrase? A certificate. Oh, yes, cert cert certificate of reasonable value. Yeah, certificate of appraisal was certificate. The bank who's loaning the money will hire their guy to do that. Yeah then the VA will do a certificate of reasonable value, mm -hmm. which in essence is, a v is an appraisal. So think of it like that. And they want to make sure that those two coincide. If the bank's appraiser is being bribed by a dirty investor or a dirty mortgage broker, and they come back and go, yeah, that house is worth a hundred grand. Give us our money. Then all of a sudden the VA goes, well, hold on, let's do ours. And this guy comes, the CRV guy comes back and goes, dude, that is a vacant land. It's worth that. VA is going to go, time out. We're not doing that deal. 
So that's what the CRV is for. It's a certificate of reasonable value. It is the second appraisal that the VA will do to ensure that the bank and the VA is not getting cheated. All right. Well, what might be like an example of a question based off of that? What is the best protective activity that the VA would do to ensure against loan fraud? You know, that the whole point of this is to try and cure loan fraud by having these people that were bribed in the appraisal section, we now have a second one. So I would say that that CRV is somehow tied into a question that might deal with loan fraud against the VA. All right, that is what it is geared to prevent. And they, they call it straw buyer, loan fraud. They call it all kinds of identity theft, anything like that it would protect because you've got two independent people. So my guess would be it would be something based upon a loan fraud question. USDA and rural loans, we've all looked at these before. The, the thing about the USDA and rural loans is that the property must qualify as well, all right? And the person, they do loan out 100% loan to value, but the property has to be in a rural area and the person has to have a not excessive income. This is one where they want lower income. A lot of times people will say, well, you didn't qualify because you don't make enough money. This is a case of you don't qualify because you make too much money. You know, you're not going to run out and see a Donald Trump or a Barack Obama or anybody getting a loan like that. Those guys are rich. They don't need that loan. And I couldn't think of two independently wealthy people right off the head. Um, what's his name? Mark Cuban. You wouldn't see Mark Cuban doing that. Okay. Amortized loan. Sweet. All right. So what we talked about was the straight loan. Amortized loan. Amortized is a Latin word that means to kill off slowly, mm -hmm. which is what I thought marriage was. <laughs> For all you married people out there. Amortized loan. Remember a minute ago we drew this and we drew the straight loan and that line at the time was, and I said that was the straight loan. Well, now what we are going to do is a very similar, only now the curve actually does curve down. And the reason it's called amortized is because the interest rate, as you can see, is being killed off slowly. Now, every payment that I make is part principal and part interest. Whereas in the straight payment, here's a good question, Sam, that's, that could get asked. If the, if the payment includes part principal and part interest, what type of loan is it? Amortized. It's an amortized loan because in a straight loan, it was all interest, then all principal. So all $500 went paid interest. Once the interest was paid off, then all $500 went paid principal. In this particular case, some portion of that 500 is principal and some portion is interest. That means it's amortized. And as you can see, as you travel out this curve, you can see that the amount of principal gets bigger every payment, where the amount of interest gets smaller every payment. All right, so what you got is this kind of thing. If I can do this, you know, as one goes up, the other goes down because the principal and the interest is the total payment. 
this amount of interest right here plus this amount of principal right here equals that $750. Now, in this particular case, we have this amount of interest, which is less than that one, and we have more principal, but they both, again, still add up to that 750 every month. And if you want to go into that fun math problem that nobody likes to do, if my payment a month was 900 and I borrowed $200,000, at 5.5% interest. It is a fully amortized loan. My question to you is how much do I owe on my loan after the first payments made? I borrow 200 grand at 5.5% interest. After I make my very first house payment, how much loan do I owe now? I hope this math works out. It does not. Yeah, it's 916, ain't it? So we are going to change the story and say my monthly payment is $990. Now go. And yes, you are right. Your interest payment is $916.67, right? Mm -hmm. So if this portion is interest and we go back to this whole concept here, that the interest and the principal have to equal the monthly payment. If my interest is that, then my principal amount was $73.33. Because the 916 for the interest and then um, 73 for the principal will add up to $990, which is what I told you my monthly payment was. So if principal was this amount, literally all I have to do is take 200,000 minus, minus $73.33. Yeah. 199.26. I now owe 199.926.67. That's on the math test. Copacetic? What was the first step? Did you have to multiply anything, that interest payment first? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Making sure. I had to multiply Two hundred times five and a half percent to get my interest rate. Okay. Actually, I did it and then divided it by twelve to get that interest rate. So you take two hundred thousand times point oh five five. Yeah. Divide that by 12, that is $916.67 a month. That's how much interest I'm paying. So then I subtracted that amount of interest from my monthly payment, and you figure out the principal is this number. And then I subtract that principal from my loan amount over here, and that gives you my new loan them out here. Okay. Another? Adjustable rate mortgage. 
The adjustable rate mortgage is a mortgage that is instead of fixed rates, which is what we just talked about. A minute ago, I just told you I had 5.5% interest. It stays the same over the course of the loan would be called fixed. You can have an adjustable rate mortgage. Now the adjustable rate mortgage works the same, only instead of being fixed, it will adjust. So there are some parts to this that you need to know. The first part is there is some kind of, um, I just lost my mind in the work. And it's like an economic, and it's tied to like an economic factor. Well, there is some uh, financial index is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some financial index it's tied to prime rate, five-year mm -hmm. treasury mortgage, 30-year, whatever it is. And then the second thing is some margin that the bank earns. So like prime plus two. Prime rate is telling you the index, the margins plus two. So whatever the prime rate is, if someone comes in and goes, oh, the prime rate's four today. Well, then my loan is four plus two is six. Mm -hmm. If the prime rate was 2.2, my margin is still two. My interest rate's 4.2. All right, that's how it works. It's some rate plus a margin. Then you've got these other issues that have to do with caps. And a cap means like the top of a bottle cap right there to keep it from jumping up. If I told you prime, and I just gave you an example, was 3.0 plus my margin, my loan would be five. What happens if we go to war tomorrow all of a sudden and prime rate jumps up to 27 plus my margin is now 29%. I had, look at that jump. Well, in order to keep my house payment from going, say, $990 here to $12,000, they put a cap on it so that none of this could happen. All right. They will put a cap that says, hey, it can only go up. 1% plus or minus every time it changes. So tomorrow, the worst case it could be tomorrow, worst case would be 4.0 plus two is six. It can't jump 20. It can only go up once or twice, one, once. Then it may have this thing, well, over the lifetime, it can only go up six in total. So even if it just jumped to 27, mine would go to four, then five, then six. And the highest it's gonna go is nine because it can only go up six over the lifetime. But I've still got my margin, which if you notice, I started out at five and the difference to 11 is six. That would be the lifetime cap. Any questions on arms? Five one arm it means it's fixed for five years and then adjusts every year after that. Three one arm fixed for the first three years, then one year after that. All right, the lending process. How do we do the lending process? What is that application through closing? When you deal with a lender, you have to understand there are two types of people. Remember, we have the lender and we actually have a mortgage broker. And they work just exactly like a real estate broker, 
only it's a mortgage that guy that brokers mortgages. All right. So when you make application, you will make application to the mortgage broker or the lender, either one. Now, under that application, they have to give you a loan estimate within three days, three business days. And that loan estimate is a estimate of how much it's going to close you cost you to close that property. So you go into your mortgage broker and say, hey, look, I want to borrow $150,000 and you give them all of the information that you need, your name, your address, your social security number, the property, how much you want to borrow. And then within three business days, they give you this loan estimate which tells you it's going to cost you $5,000 to close this $150,000 loan. That is the loan estimate. All right. Then there are some other issues that deal with when it comes in. Then when you get closer to closing, they are going to give you this closing disclosure, which you hear the slang called CD, which is going to tell you where that $5,000 goes. You know, you've got recording fees, you've got courier fees, you've got insurance for the title company, you may have protection letters, and they're not going to ask you all this. But that's what the closing disclosure does, is it gives you all, gives you an idea of where that $5,000 goes. And there are certain rules they have to apply and abide by when they give you this information. In order to not mislead you, when they give advertisements under the truth and lending, remember, if they mention any of what they call the trigger terms, they have to give you all of the terms. So they can't say things like, hey, come buy this house with zero down. That's a violation because down payment is one of the trigger terms. If you mention the, the interest rate, the monthly payment, the down payment, the amount of financing, you have to mention all of them. Now, if I said, hey, buy my house with low money down, that's not a violation because I did not tell you. If I said buy my house on $200 payments, that's a violation. I would have to also say $200 payments. $100,000 financed semi-annually, payments every 12 minutes. You know, not all people will apply. All that stuff you hear on the car commercials at the very end. Not all people will apply. $100,000 financed monthly at so and so percent interest, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. If they had simply said, come buy a Chrysler with low money down, they would have been good. But when they mentioned zero down, they now have to mention all of them, and that is under the truth and lending. Okay, so think of that truth in lending. Truth in lending. Truth stands for terms. So anytime you talk about the terms of the loan, payments, monthly payments, amount financed, that falls under the Truth in Lending Act or TILA. T-list is the terms of the loan. The other part of that is RESPA. This is the Real Estate Settlement Procedure Act. What is the settlement procedure? Real Estate Settlement Procedure. 
What's a better word for settlement procedure? Closing. Closing, very good.